Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today I want to show you a neat thing you can do with Blue Cat's Patchwork. A lot of people know it for its ability to load VSTs if you're a Pro Tools user, a very useful plugin. Uh, but we are going to be looking at it from the perspective of a layer machine. So a lot of the times when you're working, you're going to be working with multiple sounds at the same time, right? When you're composing in an FL Studio, there's this fantastic multicolor note ability where each one of these notes is on a different channel. So this is like channel two, this is channel one. And sometimes when a lot of the sounds are related in a layer, it's really nice to be able to use that, but only for like one moment and not use it for the other moments. And that would involve going to that separate channel, right? You'd load up two sounds and you'd write in the one notes on that one channel for just that one time. Sometimes this just doesn't make as much sense as just having them all together and just changing the color of the note to use that sound. So let's go ahead and do that here. In this case, let's use a bunch of piano sounds. Um, different pianos, maybe some bells instead, and then occasionally, right, we'd want some, some bell sounds. So let's go in and add it. Now, when you do this, you don't want to use the pre-column because these are all serial and it doesn't work kind of like you would expect it to. You need to do it in the parallel chain because each one of these sort of lives on its own. So let's go for loading a VST and I'm going to load Keyscape since it's really easy to get to. So the first Keyscape will leave on the default sound. It's just like a sine wave. And if we come in and, and play some notes here on channel one, um, let's put down like a, a, G, a G major chord. So here it is, we'll, we'll make it short just to sort of demonstrate how this works. So here it is, it plays on the pattern. You can hear it working. Now we need to adjust this just a smidge. So if we come in and click on the numbers right here and go over to the MIDI input, right now it's on host, but it's on all channels. We really want this to be channel one. So we'll click that and if we verify it, it is now only channel one. Um, now, a quick note about these menus. If you click another one, it will it can have multiple selections. So in this case, it it knew to change it off. But sometimes, for example, if I click channel two and then we go in and we check, we'll see that it's now on for channel one in channel two. So I kind of wish the menu would persist so that I can see the selection and then click off of it. But I just so you need to be aware of how the menu sort of do their behaviors. So, okay, that's Keyscape. Now, Keyscape I chose for a second reason. Keyscape also internally responds as a per channel thing. So let's go ahead, let's come in here. Right now we're on the default patch. And if we go over to the system, you'll see it's on channel one. If I were to change this to say channel two, it will no longer work. If we go ahead and hit play, you can see it's not working. If we move this out of the way, the notes don't trigger. But if we go back to channel one, it now works. So let's close this and let's load another. So let's select another one. Oh, we'll do VST3, Keyscape, we'll open that. So here it is, and this one, let's go for something that sounds really different. Let's go for a toy piano. And if we play it, uh, let's see here, why are we not hearing this? We need to turn it on. Okay, so this one right now by default, I believe just goes to host, yeah, all channels. So it'll play in unison with this. And we really want this to be its own thing. We want to be able to write notes on channel two. And maybe we make this, uh, I don't know, a D. We'll just put down a D right there. That'll go through. Let's just say we want this. This is going to do like some sort of pulsing motion. And this one, a, a D will show up down here. But right now, it's all playing together as the same thing. So what we could do is we come in here, we go to MIDI input host channel two, and on a lot of synths, they'll actually immediately work how you expect them to. But recall that Keyscape has a special MIDI channel selection. So if we play this, it actually just, it just won't play anything. We don't ever hear it. So what we have to do is we have to come in to Keyscape itself. Aye, aye, aye. We got to click this thing, uh, go into the system and change it to channel two. So now it knows, oh, I should be listening to channel two and it will work as we would expect it to. And this is great. Now we can have things, maybe this is, you know, I take the time and maybe make this more of an arpeggio thing, but we could have this come in and then maybe we change it. Uh, maybe we change the inversion here and we have that come 
down. Oh, you know what? Our keyboard focus is still over here. Let's get rid of that. Bring that down. And then we'll maybe move this up to layer with the G here as well. And you might pick some different colors. Say we really want this to stand out because right now it's kind of hard to see it. So let's go ahead, let's make it like, I don't know, green. Evil color green is, man. And we will change this. So that was channel 16. So we will just simply click 16. Remember, it's now listening to both 2 and 16. And I don't want to accidentally ever have that, you know, trigger twice. So we'll click off channel 2. So now it's just channel 16. And we should be hearing something. Am I not on channel 16? Oh, <laughs> there you go. There's the other thing we need to be aware of. Uh, Keyscape, again, requires you to go into the system and change this to channel 16 as well. So we will change that. And now that behaves exactly how we kind of want it to. And we could have this come down and maybe play something low. And let's add a, let's add a synth here. So let's go for, just to show you, with a synth. Um, let's go for the kilohertz phase plant. So I'm going to go to kilohertz and then to phase plant. So here it is. We'll just go for the first uh, default sound. And let's change this. We'll go into MIDI. We'll choose to use channel three. And we will choose. Uh, oh, yeah. And the first time it does it, it like doesn't cause any problems. So now if we write notes with channel three, which is like this light orange. Um, we'll put down a G down here. And we'll have it, I don't know, play some sort of rhythm. And it will go up to a D. And now we've got multiple sounds. So the whole notion of this, so that's that's the setup. And it threw me off for a little bit because you don't want to do it over here. If we were to put these over here, um, you'll notice that it just sort of breaks. We're hearing the last one only. And if we were to move this back over, now we'll hear this one and this one. And it's because this is in serial. So the fact that these are serial, and I believe since they're generators, they don't pass their audio right to the next generator. The generator just is like, I don't accept audio, thanks, and throws it in the trash, right? So you want them to be in the serial area in order for this uh, to work. So. Um, that's the first thing you need to remember. And then again, if you're using a plugin that has the MIDI channel out specified every single time, uh, you need to make sure that that has been selected to the correct channel. And now you could pick three sounds that are all related. Maybe they're all slightly different keyboards, or maybe one of the keyboards is reversed by the other ones aren't. And you can treat them as one, one sound while composing. It's like a, a big workflow boost as opposed to having to have three separate channels and then digging back and forth between the channels, which I know some of us are extremely used to doing, uh, but this can just be really convenient. What's great is you can save this as a preset and then just load it up the next time you wanna use it. And you can also have your effects you know, built right in. So much more sophisticated way of just loading up a patch if there's a particular set of sounds you like to work with and you view them as more of one cohesive sound but you still want a per note control. And if you ever want to use them, you know, as a layer, just set them to use the same MIDI channel and then boom, you've got yourself a layer. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.